recording. Da, 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 da. We need a theme song. Ba, ba, da, 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 da. <laughs> All right. All right. Good day. Here we are again. Indeed. So today's topic is um, Black Lives Matter or just race and racism and Krishna consciousness. It's a huge topic. It's an important topic. It's something that a lot of people are talking about. Uh, nationally, globally, with all the upheaval, um, politically, protests in D.C., um, but also at our own temple, we've been having conversations around race. Around ISKCON, we've been having conversations around what it means to be in, in these bodies with different privileges and how that comes together, even in a spiritual society. So, Gaurabhani Prabhu, where do you want to kick us off, start this ball rolling? Well, I guess, um, you know, so this is in preparation for our youth um, Sangha call, which is coming up this evening. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, the important thing here is to open up the conversation for you all who are watching on your own thoughts um, mm. on your identity in this body. You know, some of those on the call are black, you know, African American, whatever uh, term is most comfortable. Um, uh, some are mixed, some are, um, you know, part Indian, part American. Um, you know, it, some are Indians from India, some are some grew up or were born in America and, you know, parents from India or one parent from India, you know, so it's an interesting. You know, it's a challenging topic because um, one of the things that I've, you know, the other day, someone, one of my a musician I work with said to me, like, I was on the Internet and I saw so and so this wonderful musician talking. Did you know that he believes this, that and the other thing? And I was like, well, you know, Srila Prabhupada built a house that the whole world can live in, which means that there's room for everybody here, which means. Indeed. Yeah, like all, you know, from across the spectrum, you know, so that's challenging, you know, because we have this identity as devotees, but then we also go out into the world and we have to deal with the world the way the world perceives us. You know, the world can't know that we see ourselves as devotees of Krishna necessarily, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is a challenge, especially for young people, you know, we're out in the world and we're being perceived by our bodies, by our mm -hmm. economic status, by our connections. Mm -hmm. It makes for a very challenging reality. I think. Great. Thank you. And what you're saying makes me think how, you know, how does our spiritual vision, how, how does this fantastic, glorious darshan of Gaudiya Vaishnava Krishna consciousness. The soul hit, eternally connected with Krishna. Right. How does it hit the road of material life? Uh, how does this, you know, saying that we have, you're not the body, uh, how does this a vision that Krishna presents us in the Gita of seeing everyone as equal as Samadarshana, uh, how does that play itself out? in in our lived experiences in 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 the reality of this world in our interactions with others in our interactions with uh our, within our own spiritual families and communities um and i think that's that's the heart of it um, i mean that's the rubber meets the road is what it means to be krishna conscious it's one thing to be krishna conscious when you're reading Prabhupada or listening to a kirtan or seeing the deity like i'm krishna conscious but then it's like you know, you go out into your car and if you're a black devotee and you get pulled over by a police officer or a young black devotee in shopping in a store mm -hmm. and automatically assume that you're a shoplifter, or automatically assume that you're up to trouble or no good or, you know, that's a reality for those devotees. That's not a theory. So how how does that I'm not this body actually help them, mm -hmm. you know, in their journey in this material world um is something that's helped me um in, in understanding this um this dynamic of the philosophy meeting practice and reality is you know when when krishna talks about us all being equal um sparks of the divine uh when Prabhupada says we're not this body 
it was it was something clicked for me when I realized they're not describing reality or they're not describing what um, material reality. Right. They're not describing material reality. They're not describing what happens automatically when we become a devotee somehow magically. They're describing how things should be. Um, right? They're they're describing our an goal, ideal. Our right. They're they're describing something we need to actually work toward, take concrete steps to work towards in recognizing the 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 beauty, the the gift that each person, regardless of their um, race and gender and ethnic identity brings um, to to this life and to our relationships and not to uh, objectify people or generalize them into these categories and boxes that really don't that really don't work and sometimes are just blatantly false. Uh, I think a lot of racism is uh, due to us uh, making these, sort of overarching generalizations about certain people and living our lives ac according to them when we actually need to see each individual for who they are and stop relying on these um, misleading uh, biases in our minds. But, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's another, you know, without getting, trying to get too complicated here, you know, there's also another interesting level of this reality, which is, if I come from a, a family that is poor, mm -hmm. I have certain practical challenges mm -hmm. that are just not perceived by someone who is rich, mm -hmm. right? So it's not just enough to shift our awareness. There's also a practical reality, mm -hmm. you know, um, the opportunities that exist for a rich kid even regardless of race, but but in this country, it's 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 even exacerbated or exaggerated or increased when you add race to this equation. You know the difference between a poor person and a wealthy person. The opportunities are just vastly different, yes. and so perception it's itself it's is not just, it's systematic. It's about yeah, it's, yeah. exactly about the oppression. It actually it reminds me of something that came up in a conversation at the temple yesterday. Uh, which was tell us uh, this, just a little bit about what what that was yesterday at the temple. Yes, yeah, so, so at the temple, devotees led by Ananda Vrindavan and Jadarani um, Matha were they, they started this conversation around um, race and racism in in the movement in ESCON um, and how to address it and what to do about it. And um, one of the points that Jadarani brought up, which I thought was really important and something I'm gonna say again, is there's a difference between bigotry and racism. And the, the analogy that comes to mind for me is bigotry, I'm a, I'm a bigot if I you know, walk into a bus and I see someone I don't like and I don't sit next to them, simply not because I know them or they've done something to me, but just simply because of the color of their skin or you know, the language they speak or the clothes they're wearing, right? Um, that, that would be bigotry. But racism would be if, I am part of a system that doesn't allow them to sit on the bus with me or that doesn't allow them to sit in the front of the bus with me and has, you know, and this is this is what would happen in Jim Crow, right? All people of color had to sit in the back of the bus. So there was like a, a section. And um, and that that's when it takes these institutionalized systematic system, systemic forms that are so much beyond your average bigot because they wield a power over an individual that is is really really hard to rise above right as in if someone is being bigoted towards you your ability to rise above their nastiness can empower you to be living a better life mm -hmm. whereas if you're dealing with the institutional racist system mm -hmm. no matter how resilient you are it would appear that you're going to continue to suffer under that system. Right. It's designed to keep you down. Right. Yeah. And that's hugely problematic. And for me, the Vaishnava vision is, um, and I, I know devotees take a lot of stances on this, and this is where we can some, get to Yeah, some do not agree on this yeah. you know, next part yeah. of the conversation. Right. And and for me, this is, you know, one, one vision is, well, 
um, everyone's suffering in the material world. I can't do anything about it. I'm going to keep my head down and, you know, book to the nose, uh, sorry, nose to the, into, into the book and kind of mind my own business. Um, but for me, I feel a, a responsibility to, uh, to do something about it because I know that in, in so many prayers that we have, Vaishnavas are described as Kripa Sindhu, an ocean of mercy. And I just feel like if there's any mercy at all in our hearts, we have to be, we have to help alleviate the suffering condition of humanity, but also our brothers and sisters, our, our fellow Vaishnavas who are suffering under like this cruel system um, with, with no recourse essentially, or very little recourse, but to take to the streets, right? But to participate in protests um, and, and, and ask for change when all the normal courses of action have not yielded results for centuries. That's my two cents on that. Yeah, that's a very, it's, it's a, you know, the, there, there does seem to be on, on some side for some devotees, a hesitation to get involved in anything that feels like it's not spiritual or something mm-hmm. that feels like it's not connected to directly to serving Krishna or the Shastra or the festival calendar or you know, mm-hmm. Prabhupada's books or something like that. Yeah. But, you know, as you know, as my Guru Maharaj, His Holiness Radhanath Swami likes to say, how can you say that you love Krishna if you're not expressing that love to all of Krishna's children? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So that, that seems like a natural expression that if you love Krishna, you're going to naturally feel love towards all creatures. And yeah. so... So the question becomes then, you know, what is our motivation for what we're doing? And if the motivation is right, if the motivation is to love Krishna and to serve Krishna, Mm -hmm. then whatever we're doing will be filled with that energy. So when we see someone suffering and we think of them connected to Krishna and we try to alleviate their suffering in some way, because of the awareness that we have that they are Krishna's child. Mm -hmm. It brings us closer to Krishna. It brings them closer to Krishna. It makes society better. You know, like so many good things come from that. You know, right. right You're absolutely right. What was our conclusion the last time or the last to last time we had this discussion Mm -hmm. was that everything's related to Krishna. That was one of our conclusions. And to, to say that... Even Britney some, Spears. Is Britney Spears related to Krishna? Yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> Jiva in her, you know. She's a Jiva. Comes from Krishna. Part of Krishna. she starts leading some kirtan. That's going to be some right. pretty good kirtan. Yeah. Brittany. How can we say something is not related to Krishna? I mean, that's my true challenge. And that's something that I think it's is possible. really... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's impossible. And, and the more we see in that way, the more we can help be examples and, and right. leaders in society and people will follow us not simply because we chant Hare Krishna on the streets but because we change the world well that is such a nice point I think that might be a really nice point to end this on which is yeah. that you know Prabhupada wanted to create a culture of Brahmins and Brahmins are those who lead by example and those who teach by example and and you know um how do we expect to actually have an impact if people feel that we're aloof aloof from their sufferings so in a way even though we may be spiritually i mean i'm not but theoretically someone becomes spiritually disattached unattached from you know the difficulties of life and you know whatever they will still express their love because it's through expressing that love and that Kripa Sindhu, that you know, that that you know, ocean of kindness, that it it attracts people to want to be better, to mm-hmm. want to be more. And if we can't show that in a practical way, then then how can we um, meet people where they are? Yeah, you know? I mean, then we become truly irrelevant, and we rele- we relegate ourselves to. You know, the dustbin of history. <laughs> the dustbin of history. Yeah. Do not want to be in the dustbin of history. 
<laughs> I mean, and this is, you know, this is just a cheap shot here I'm about to do, but this is also why the second most interesting topic that we were going to discuss tonight, uh, why we need to go to school. Right. Um, you know, education and awareness help us to connect with uh, knowledge or, or realization on a topic, right? So going to school just gives you some of that like initial inspiration, but you know, that is meant to take you to mm. a place of serious inquiry, mm. you know, actual curiosity. Right. You know, the point of knowledge. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, I hope we haven't gone too long. I know, I know our audience likes very brief to. Short attention span. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this is great. Um, thank you. Thank you. Garbon. I think at the end of this, we have to turn this into a TikTok to get the kids interested. Oh my God. It's a TikTok video. It's a TikTok video. Do, 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 do. Oh my God. We're so lame and old. <laughs> All right. We love you guys. Thank you for tuning in to another Prem and Gora show. <laughs> Indeed. Take care, everyone. Thanks for letting us serve you. Hare Krishna. We love you guys. Hare Bo.